will be about empty and blank. You will see a very interesting sort of presentation because I'm going to use the finder and preview to give the talk. Okay? Ken? Because not enough time, I only made the slides today. Slides. So today I'll be talking about empty and blank. Anyone heard of empty and blank before? Hey, everyone else know. So empty and blank are pseudo selectors. What this what pseudo selectors means is it's, fake, it's kind of like fakey shot. It's not present in the HTML. And you can use them to style the HTML in specific ways. What empty and blank does is, according to the name, it tries to search for empty. So example of an empty element is the div without any spaces. That is an empty element. So an empty element can have comments, but uh, OK. There's a little tiny mistake here because the comment cannot have any space. So this is you know, typo when I'm making the slides. Okay. But if you have, say, a, a blank space in the HTML, right, then empty doesn't match the HTML anymore. So what you need to do is to use blank. So blank matches this, but empty doesn't. So that's generally what blank and empty does, finding the HTML in a certain specific state. So like valid or, you know, like ends child, that kind of thing, all those. Um, what's this called? Uh, Browser is very good. So empty has perfect browser support across everything. So you can definitely use empty in your, in your production app. That's fine. Blank, not so. Only Firefox. And only most only white space as the selector. So it's a little bit iffy. Yeah. But it's good to know that there is empty to use. But basically, how to use? Um, what are they used for? So basically, empty and blank are used for and creating empty states. So either one of these situations. Example will be good. Like example will be good. So let's say you want to style a div when there is an error. So when there is no error, you don't want anything. So kind of something like that. Without errors, the HTML will be like, will be this error and then nothing. And then with errors, you probably say a class error with a state that this is an error and then, oops, something went wrong. So this is how you normally write the HTML, right? Then in the CSS, if you want to style, you'll be, oh, error, you have to display none. And then when the state is error, you display block again. So that's kind of how you write. But if you use empty, you don't even need the display none because empty will no display none by automatically. So you just have to style the, the, the error. I put padding in there because there's something else. Uh, then you can adjust around. Uh, so either padding 0 and padding, change around a little bit, and then you can get something like that. So this is the demo. Basically, if you look at the HTML, 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 you see, this is just a class with an error. This is empty. Yeah, a bit small. Plus, 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 plus. Big enough? Yes. OK. So if there is an error message, okay. your trap is very slow. OK. So if there's an error message, then you show the error diff. So this is like styling an empty diff by itself. And uh, if there are no error messages, then nothing will, will show up. Lah. So the HTSS in this case is just as simple. Error with some padding, and then error empty, you don't have any padding. So you add padding because you need the, spike, the space be between the words. Lah. If there is no padding, then uh, if, there's, if, the, if the div is empty, then you re remove the padding so there's nothing there at all. That's basically what uh, we are doing here. OK, back to my very good um, slides. If you want this code pen, you can go to this link. We will share it out to everybody later, don't worry. Yeah, I can share the, the blog article with you also. So that will be simple, because yeah. everything is in the blog article. OK, the next one will Huh? Nothing. I, I have been in the market. Oh, Ken, sweet. The next one we're going to talk about is creating empty states. Uh, empty states means, let's say you have an uh, app. And when you log into an app, right, you, don't, you haven't created anything yet. And then usually what they will show is an empty, empty screen where, OK, you should press this or press that to get started. So that's kind of like an empty state. 
So what we can do is to create an empty state, like um, say if you have a to-do list of things, like three items. If there are no items, you will probably want to say, hey, you do want to add a new to-do, something like that. Okay? So you can, you can put the HTML in this way if you want to use empty. Okay? So what happens is if the items are empty, you can say, uh, no. Yeah, so the empty state div itself, you can say display none at the start. And then if the list is empty, you display block. So the empty state comes out when, you know, the list is empty. But because empty only works, huh? empty only works with empty elements, huh? so what this means is if you remove one item at a time, like, okay, you remove this, from the DOM, and then you remove this from the DOM, and then you remove this from the DOM, what happens is you are left with a UL and a space and a close UL. So empty doesn't work that way. That means you have to add some JavaScript, you know, to check when your event listener check if, to see if there are any children items in there. Children elements. If there are no children elements, that means there are no items. So we don't care about comments. If there are no children elements, you just cancel away the entire HTML. So you set it to an empty string to reset everything, and then empty will kick in. The empty pseudo selector will kick in. So this is how it's done. Uh, this is the demo. So as you can tell, I had to write some JavaScript here to make sure the thing kicked in. So when I click the last time, the empty state is shown. And the CSS simply says ul plus div, which is the, the empty state div, display none, and then when it's empty, we add some styles to it. So this is how empty and blank can be used. Uh, I learned about how to use this from this guy called Halen Pickering. So from this thing, inclusive comps, if you haven't gone there before, you should go because it talks about inclusive components and accessibility and how to actually create proper HTML for everyone. So I more, uh, because I will share this in, like, in various locations like Twitter. Go and Google Twitter, inclusive or, component. Or, yeah, just Google inclusive components. I think it's SEO quite well done. The yes. Okay. See the, see, the, see the logo there? Inclusive components. Google that one. Okay? Can? And I am done. Yeah, this is the, oh, this is the link to that, that article earlier. And if you want to read the blog post that I write, it's zlwk.com slash blog slash empty dash blank and dash, empty dash and dash blank. Okay, Ken. So, yes. Okay, we got bonus, bo bonus uh, content, which is uh, Chris, who we're going to talk about. Okay, let me add shameless plugs. Oh. Shameless plugs. Okay, yeah, shameless yeah, plug. Hello. Oh, at the end. Yeah. Oh, okay.